So let's meet the meat. Now the first one is a low grade steak. It's not been altered or tenderized in any way. The second one is that same low grade steak but we've tenderized it with a low explosive. The third one we've tenderized with a high explosive. And the fourth one we've tenderized with a pineapple enzyme commercial preparation. Now the last one is a prime steak that's been aged 28 days. We're gonna test all of these and see which one is the most tender. And so as not to influence the results, Adam adds a touch of color. We have five different cuts of meat to cook and test. Each of those cuts of meat has been assigned a color which matches to these pans and our little taste test bowls here. To ensure there's no bias from the Barbie, steak chef Joe Cohn cooks all five cuts just the same. And another celebrity chef has been invited to dine in the dirt. We're bringing in Ron Siegel, who's the chef at the Ritz-Carlton, and he's the only American ever to win the Japanese Iron Chef program. Ron, Hi, thanks, thanks for, for coming on to help us out. Thank thanks for coming out to the bomb range. Yeah, thank you. All right, where are those steaks? It turns out that Ron is double qualified to judge this contest. He began his professional life as a butcher. Gentlemen, we get five cuts of meat and we are to rate them from the least tender to the most tender. It's all about tender. Let the chewing commence. Steak's good. Some of it is better than others. Uh. I'm done. So, drum roll, please. Three different tasters and three totally different results. For this myth to be true, the order should be red, yellow, blue, pink, then green. But no one agreed on anything. And that's got Adam worried. Even though we had five different samples here, the main thing we wanted to see was that the green, the high explosive tenderized meat, would be rated higher than the red, our control. And even though I did that, neither Ron nor Jamie felt like that. So right now, it's not looking that good for this man. Let's get back to the shop and crunch the numbers. I'm cold. <laughs> All right. Is there any more steak left? Here's a few simple rules for safe driving. Don't do it drunk, distracted, or stressed. Aside from the danger, driving under duress might add to your fuel bill. And that's today's motoring myth. Later on, we'll try to redline Grant and Tory's stress levels. Ah, you suck! But first, we need a nice, calm comparison test. And Carrie knows just how to put the boys into a mellow mood. Grant, for you, we have puppies. <laughs> Tori, for you, we have the director's cut of Blade Runner <laughs> and all your favorite desserts. I don't want to leave. These are the fluffiest puppies we could find. They're eight weeks old. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> OK, I think we found Grant's happy place. <laughs> While Grant gets acquainted with his extra fluffy puppies, Tori slips next door for a pre-movie massage. This is the best day of Mythbusters ever. Now we want that calm feeling to last throughout the test, so we're gonna cater to the senses. We're gonna have CD playing that has really soothing music. We're gonna have lavender scenting the car, and aromatherapists say that this is a calming smell. We're going to have a plush seat cover and steering wheel cover so they have something nice to touch. And we'll, we'll see how much fuel that they use when they're in that relaxed mode. Sounds very calming, but not for Carrie. She's wrestling with a concept that never fails to raise your blood pressure. One size fits all. Calm day has been a pain in the butt. I'm looking forward to stressful day. I think that's gonna be Carrie calm day. So it's gonna be fun. Ooh, it smells nice in here. What if I get so relaxed I fall asleep and crash? I guess we'll find out how fuel efficient a crash is. Tori's the first cab off this restricted rank with precisely 2,500 grams of gasoline. Now for the first of three nasty surprises as he learns he's not alone out there. Go angry driver. 